What's up guys, my name is Christopher. I am an alumni at ASU. I graduated this May and I have applied to 21 medical schools and I am awaiting uh, interview invitations as of right now. I've actually wanted to make this video for a while. I uh, put in a lot of work, so if you guys uh, are interested in hearing about this and more medical school related stuff, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. We, I really appreciate that. Also, make sure to leave a like and comment on about what kind of subject you want me to talk about too going forward. So, the topic of today's video is going to be about my journey from high school to medical school and what I went through, what I learned, uh, and how this could possibly help you. I know a lot of my viewers might be uh, high school students who are interested in the field of medicine, and a lot of my viewers might also be college students who are interested in medicine. You guys wanna be here for medicine, right? So let me start way back when in high school, uh, about eight years ago, which is crazy to say out loud. Okay, so I was impacted, okay? I knew that the people who had helped me uh, walk again were people who I looked up to and I wanted to do the same. I wanted to be able to help people with my own two hands. I wanted to learn to have the knowledge to be able to to do good, you know? Uh, now, starting high school, I was pretty like oblivious to any opportunities that there might have been in my high school. So unfortunately, I wouldn't know if there were, if my high school offered pre-medical programs or interning or anything like that because in high school I was very lax. I was the kind of guy who studied never, got my straight A's, played video games all the time, uh, did some sports on the side and just, you know, called it a day. I got through high school, graduated top 5% of my class, got a full ride to my state college, ASU. Starting at ASU, however, let's get into that now, where it was very different. So, um, now, my freshman year, I didn't really get into too many extracurricular activities. The only extracurricular activity I did my freshman year was I volunteered, okay? I also worked full-time my freshman year, uh, so I didn't have too much time on my hands. And I really thought that I could pull off what I did in high school, uh, which was never study, play video games, relax, and just coast through college the same way. But I had a very rude awakening after my first test. Uh, and I can remember my first biology test was nothing I'm, I'm proud to talk about, but it had to happen, you know? Some people need that wake-up call, some people don't. I needed that wake-up call. I looked at that paper and I was like, well, is this, is this the kind of, is this like the kind of story I want? Is, is this what I want to do for college? I was like, no, I don't. I don't want to waste the opportunity that it was given to me. So I started focusing, I started studying, I started making time. I had a lot of late nights, I had a lot of early mornings, especially juggling full-time work. I only went to school Tuesdays and Thursdays and then I worked uh, the other five days of the week. So I was always doing something. Um, now, sophomore year, things started to get better. During my first semester of sophomore year, things were still a little like rough, but by the end of first semester and throughout second semester and the rest of college, everything got much, much easier. So I was working part-time after that. I had more time to do. I was definitely like stretching myself and doing more than I was previously. Now, I don't regret that. I think that uh, my advice for any freshman going into college is that you should take your first year and completely focus on your grades. You should make sure that you can make your GPA as you know as high as possible, as good as possible your first year because your first year is really when your GPA is the most malleable. You know, you have zero credits. So whatever GPA you get for that semester is what your overall GPA is gonna be. And then the next semester, you gotta make sure it's strong. And so now you have two semesters, that's roughly 32 to 36 uh, credits, depending on how many credit hours you're taking, okay? So this is a strong base, this is a strong foundation. Once you have 36 credits and they're all 4.0s, you can get a B and your GPA is only gonna drop to like a 3.9, 3.85, because you have a strong foundation. However, if you, you know, get C's and B's your first year, and now your GPA is sitting at a 3.0, and then you pull all these 4.0's, your GPA is going to go from a 3 to a 3.1, 3.15. You see how it, it works in both directions. So my advice, freshman year, focus on your grades. Get a good foundation, get a good start.
um, there, so there was a rumor when I was a freshman that medical schools don't really care about your freshman year because they know it's a transition year. That's false, guys. It is absolutely false. Your GPA counts the minute you start. So you have to make sure that you start on the right foot. Going back to my sophomore year talk. So I started doing extracurricular, sophomore, junior, senior. My sophomore and junior year, I really did a lot of mentoring. So I was a lead, I, did, I took some leadership roles. So my school was called the School of Life Sciences within ASU. And that was basically where all the science programs uh, resided was in the School of Life Sciences. So I was a, a mentor to freshmen who were new during my uh, junior year. So I was, uh, you know, showing them around campus. I was showing them where the tutoring rooms were. I was showing them, um, the, you know, I was giving them tips on the best way to study. I give out my number to every freshman. Shout out to any one of you guys who are watching this video. Probably not because they all hated me. <laughs> but, but. It was a learning experience and it would definitely took me out of my comfort zone and forced me into a leadership position that I desperately needed. It taught me what it meant to be a teacher, you know, it's not as easy as, as teachers make it look. I was also in an honors club on my campus, the name of that club was Sigma Alpha Lambda. But with them, I was able to do a lot of community service, I was able to donate a lot of my time to helping the community at ASU which was just an invaluable experience, plus the fact that you needed to have a higher GPA to be in that club anyways, so it just kind of made it like so exclusive on its own. So I definitely like appreciated that experience and uh, I would recommend that for anybody as well too. If you guys have honors clubs at your colleges, then get involved in those. The next thing that I did was I interned. So I was able, so I started off interning through a class at ASU. And in that class, we were only allowed to go to the clinics of whatever we got uh, assigned to. So I was assigned a urologist. So I went to clinics with them every Friday, and we saw like, like uh, my urologist was personally a busy guy, but we saw about 50 to 60 patients in one day, okay? Which was like about an eight hour day. Eight hours, we'd fit 60 patients. And we would go through patient to patient, patient to patient, room to room, room to room. And I did, and I would watch vasectomies, I'd watch any like, in clinic operations that, that he could do. But I was able to also build a good relationship with him and eventually after my class ended, I was also able to start going to the local hospital to go watch him in the operating room. And that was incredible. When I started to go to the operating room, I kind of stopped going to clinics with him because I just wanted to be in the hospital. I wanted to be in scrubs surrounded by other doctors and nurses and watching these surgeries, watching all the blood and gore. It was, <laughs> sorry. That makes it sound a little creepy, but guys, it's 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 incredible. It's like you're at the top of a roller coaster the first time you see it, and the minute you see him like cut open into the person, it's like you're dropping. You get that rush, you know. You're either passing out or you are like so pumped on adrenaline that you cannot stand still. And that's that's where I was. I was I was in love with it. I was at the hospital for like 12 hours, and those 12 hours went by so fast i didn't even feel the time go by because i was so happy just watching and learning i really really recommend if you guys don't have any classes at your college to observe that you go and find doctors to observe just send go out to local clinics shoot emails let them know you're interested let them know that you're pre-medical and some will take you in so find whatever you can now, let's talk about the MCAT. So I took my MCAT twice. First time I took it was in between junior and senior year. So first time I took the MCAT, I had made a lot of rookie mistakes. I didn't really set, in, set aside enough time to study. I did more like content review than I did practice questions, which I should have really flipped it around. But I ended up scoring a 501 my first time. It sucked getting that score but it didn't kill me, it didn't discourage me. I was able to pick myself back up, I was able to pick up the books again, dedicate th that time, you know, cut, cut way back on work. Uh, this time I was working about six hours a week or less, sometimes nothing a week, okay? And I was just studying my butt off for this MCAT. I did it right, okay? If you guys wanna know what I scored the second time, then just click somewhere up here 
I'll have a link to my video where I talk, where I show my live reaction to opening my MCAT score and my score with a, like a breakdown of, of how that went. As if right now today, I've applied to 21 medical schools. I've applied to 20 MD schools uh, that are in-state and out-of-state, and I've applied to one DO school that's in-state. I, I am currently awaiting an interview invite from 21 schools. I haven't heard back yet. If you guys are watching this, please just, just do it already, because I am like checking my emails like a madman. All right, so we got that set up. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to uh, change location for the uh, last part of my video. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about now is just like some little, you know, tidbits of information. So one thing that I want to talk to uh, talk to you guys about and tell you from my own personal experience is that pre-med is a very, very difficult major, okay? And it's something that not everybody can handle, and that's the truth of the fact. A lot of people who are upperclassmen will know that, you know, when you're a freshman and sophomore, your class sizes are much bigger, but it slowly starts to thin out as you go through, and then eventually, you know, your classes that used to be 500 kids who thought they could all be doctors is now full of like, you know, 30, 40 kids. So I do have a couple of like tidbits to help you avoid some some burnout. Some of it is kind of obvious, but I feel like all of it needs, should be said. First things first is that you need to learn how to love the journey. Because if you don't love the journey, then you are not gonna love the reward at the end of that journey, okay? Because being a doctor, I promise you, is is it is different, but it's also not that much different than being in an undergrad towards becoming a doctor. At the end of the day, it's lo it's gonna be long hours, it's gonna be a lot of tests, it's gonna be a lot of work, it's gonna be a lot of time. And that's not just, people think like, oh, once I graduate medical school and finish residency, then I'm done with tests and everything. But guys, if you wanna keep your license, you gotta recertify every you know couple years or so. You're, and guess what you're doing? You're taking tests, you're learning, you're studying. If you are a doctor, you are gonna be a student forever and you need to love the process. Otherwise, you are gonna hate it. You're gonna hate your life, okay? The next bit of information is you need to surround yourself with positive people, okay? Realistic, but positive people. What I mean by that is like, Nowadays, people are way too quick to complain. Man, I hate this homework. Man, I hate this professor. Always gives me too much homework. Always picks on me to, to, to ask questions. You guys are already dealing with something that is so difficult on its own that you don't need to be surrounding yourself with people who are gonna add more negativity to all the, all the crap you're already dealing with. And God knows that the, uh, the challenges of being a pre-med are not the only thing that most of you are going through. You know, some of you are working full time or part time. Some of you are have 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 relationships, have other things going on in your life that you're involved in, that you're invested in. You don't want to surround yourself with people who are going to demotivate you, people who are going to just keep complaining about stuff. You want to surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up. You, want, you know, ideally, people who are smarter than you, people who inspire you to push yourself to be smarter, to work better. Okay, don't, you know, sometimes you have to just go ahead and cut out whoever is toxic, you know, it might not be easy, you know, it might be very hard, that person might be very close to you, but at the end of the day, you have to be selfish, you have to choose you, you have to choose your mental health and your own happiness for, for other people's, okay, that's the truth of the situation, guys, everybody wants to be able to you know, keep all their friends and not upset anybody and never have to be put in the situation where it's either me or them, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to be selfish. You have to take a look at reality and just realize that some certain people are just not meant to be in your life. And that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, people change, people grow. Sometimes you outgrow people. The way I see it is if you're in medicine, then you are definitely outgrowing at least 75% of every other major out there because you are spending more time studying, you're spending more time involved, you're spending more time grinding and hustling 
and what are other majors doing? Like looking over at the uh, business majors, partying, drinking on the weekends, going to concerts and living their lives. And I'm not saying that you can't do that, but I'm also saying that you probably shouldn't be in a fraternity or a sorority and be doing all that shit because chances are, you know, eventually you're gonna get pulled in a direction. You're gonna have a tough decision to make. Do I go to a party or do I stay and, uh, and study? Sometimes, most of the time, you end up making that wrong decision, you know? Especially after you've made the right decision five, six, seven, eight times. You're like, God damn it, I need a break. Oh, people are stopping in front of me. Okay. okay. Even if you make the right choices five, six, seven times, you're gonna slip one time. You're gonna realize how good of a time you're having and what you've been missing out on. I don't know. I think I'm good at predicting this shit, but maybe there's people in my comments who are gonna say that I'm full of shit. So we'll, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to read all of it, even the hate. Keeps me humble. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, I just want to let you know that I worked really, really hard on this video, and if you guys liked it, then please go ahead and subscribe to me, leave a thumbs up, and comment. Give me your opinions on my video. Tell me what you'd like to see me do next. Uh, tell me how big my biceps are getting because I've been working out more. I honestly will take all the feedback and uh, praise <laughs> that I can get. So thank you guys for tuning in to my latest medical school video. I want to try to make more of these because I feel like these videos do better than my fitness videos. I, I guess I'm not much of an influencer in that field. Oh, okay, that's that's fine. I'll uh, I'll still keep making my videos on the low, but I'll also be making more medical school videos. Thanks, guys.